Okay, hey everyone, uh, Martin here uh, from FedSer. Uh, today's session, we're going to be uh, working on navigation menus as per Talitha's request. Um, hope you guys are all doing well. Okay, so this is going to be all of us for today, I believe. So I guess we can get started now. Um, Talitha requested for this session that what we do is uh, look into... Sorry, I just got to make sure that I am recording here. Uh, that we look into uh, nav menus and how they work and possibly best practices and how they, you know, just, just pretty much everything about nav menus. Um, and then I, I believe you, she also asked, uh, you know, so like what, what are the sort of the, the popular ones at the moment? So I guess we're going we're gonna to be going through, through all of that. I'm going to start screen sharing now. Okay, so... I'm not, I'm not too sure. I've never really done like a, a full session just on nav menus. So I apologize if I don't um, have a sort of chock -a block full of content or uh, if, it, if there is too much content. So I must apologize. Okay. So the first thing I think it what we're going to probably be doing here is just sort of discussing nav menus and then getting everybody's understanding of nav menus and everything. Um, and then uh, towards the end, we can start looking at the designs um, and possibly just some code in here. I'm not going to be able to code out every single nav menu. It's just, we're not going to have the time to, to do all of that. So I'd have to, I might even have to just jump into Photoshop or Figma. Um, I guess we'll just do Photoshop. Uh, just jump into Photoshop and then sort of mock, mock the different nav menus. Um, okay, so what what is a navigation menu, right? Okay, so a nav menu is that you get to a website and it's basically going to allow you to navigate around the website. Um, it's, it's really just that basic. Uh, in the past, we used to just sort of drop links and that was, we just called that, you know, end of day, we were finished. But now when we're doing nav menu, we actually need to cater for uh, devices that for, for basically for accessibility. Um, so generally when it comes to, to nav menus, there's, I'm not going to say there's only one way to do it when it comes to laying it out, but there is almost one way that you should always be doing it. Once you get really good and you know what you're doing, then you can sort of uh, stray from the path. But at the moment, there is always going to be one way that you would be expected to build out your nav menu. So if you've got a, uh, uh, like an interview question or, you know, like a, you're trying to apply for a job um, and you need to do a nav menu, you're pretty much always going to be doing this. Okay. So yeah, I've got the page. Just make sure that you guys can see. You can see, right? Uh, my... um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So what we got here is just just a basic page. There's nothing in it. Um, mm -hmm. What I'm just going to do is create just uh, just sort of like a header, main, and a footer. Okay. So div, and then I'm just going to call it page header. Um, actually, this should have actually been inside of like a page wrapper. Okay. So I'm going to call this page wrapper. Um, okay, so we've got a header inside there, then we want a main, and we want a footer. Sorry. Okay, so we've got that content in there. Um, let's just go and add our stuff in. Okay, so for our page wrapper, um, I know that immediately we're going to have flex inside it, uh, with flex direction of column, so that... We're going to have an outside wrapper and our content's going to float down because we're going to have our header, we're going to have our body, and we're going to have our footer. Um, so just trying to rush through this. I don't want to waste your time just building things out like this. So then we've got page header. I'm going to make background just red. And a heart of 80 pixels, I guess. Okay, so we've got a header in there. Then we need our page main. Um, that we can expand in a moment, but for now I'm just going to make it just yellow. And then page footer, background green, top of there, and another one, sorry about that, sorry, when, when I'm doing these sessions, like, I'm stumbling over my mark, and the, the text is a lot bigger, so it, it's a bit, lot harder for me to work, so I apologize for that, okay, so we've got our content in there, I don't see anything happening, um, let me just see what's going on here, okay, so our footer, we just got to give a heart, we're going to have 80 pixels. And then our last one, page main, we're going to do flex grow of one. Just while we're here, because people tend to be struggling with this still. Um, we've got this sort of trifecta layout. Uh, Skulk, last time he said there was a certain name for it. Um, the Holy Trinity, I guess it's called. 
basically where you've got a header, you've got a main section, and you've got a footer. Now, how do you get it so that the main section grows all the way so that the footer is always at the bottom? Um, so I'm just going to do that and just hold on. So if you do what I, like I usually show you, where you do for your main, a hard 100% or um, flex grow one and it's still not working, the very first thing you need to go and check is make sure, is your, is your HTML and your body expanding the whole page? Um, that's usually the first culprit. So I can see HTML is not spanning the whole page. And I can see body is not spanning the whole page. Um, I'm sorry that we're sort of not talking about nav menus, but it, it is something that I did notice in the projects. So what, what you're missing here is that in your HTML, and there are a couple of other ways to do this, but for this case, I'm just going to say um, heart is 100 view heart. Okay, so now let's just check our HTML. Now our HTML is expanding the entire page. Previously, when it wasn't like that, the content could never ever grow because it just stopped you. For as far as HTML was concerned, this was the end of our page. I've, I've undone that code that I had there. As far as HTML is concerned, this is the end of the page. It doesn't go any further than that. So that's why we wanted to actually go the full view height. Um, and so that, that tends to catch people out. Now, because we've got that, we can actually expand our body. I haven't saved yet. I haven't saved yet. I'm just going to show you the body is still constrained like that. So I'm going to save it now. Now you can see the body has gone all the way down. Okay. So we've got our HTMLs all the way, the whole screen, and you've got body, that's the whole screen. Um, now what we can do in our page main is we can either say heart 100%. Should be able to say that. Um, so I'm just going to clear the margin that's on the outside of the page. There's that margin that I just really, really hate. And that's the margin that's built into your browser. Um, okay, so that's the... Okay. Now, the last one that we have to do is our page wrapper is not hard 100%. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Done. Um, should always be able to create this type of layout. Like back in the day, this was a real challenge to do, but it's actually super duper easy now. You just got to basically, two ways, you can have a flex container and you just say flex grow one. Like this, flex grow one. Save it and then you can see it's still like that. Or you can have um, a heart of 100%. But what might happen when you're doing a heart of 100%, you might get overflow. So then you're going to have a vertical scroll bar. In that case, what you need to do is you need to do like calculate your heart. And then you need to minus the size of your header. So 80 pixels. This isn't going to work yet, but it's just to show you anyways. And then minus the heart of the footer. Um, and that's just basic math. And that's basically saying that our heart must be this whole page minus the size of this header and then minus the size of this footer. Um, and if you end up using variables, then this is a lot easier. But I, I prefer to just flex grow one. Um, then you don't, because then maybe you change your header size and then it's, it's thrown out of sync. Okay, so sorry about that. Just getting that set up, but it's, it's always good to sort of just go over these sort of fundamentals. Um, and I'm just going to change the background here to light. Let's do like a light. Sign that's the two lots, right? A lot gray would different. Okay, so we got we got our header now. Um yeah, so that's that's we've covered there. So let's let's now talk uh oh yes, we were speaking about how you're supposed to structure out a nav a nav container. Okay, so we've got we've got our header bolt here. Now how would you go and structure out your nav? Um I guess I'm just going to ask just so that if anybody has been doing sort of their learning, any of you know what I'm talking about in regards to a specific way it has to be done? No. Okay. Um, sorry. Yeah. Um, shouldn't you have the, the nav semantic tags in there just to say that you are? Yes, correct. Yeah. So we're going to be using a nav tag, um, and that is just a div. It's just a div, like it's, it's amongst... Amongst many of the other ones, like footer, header, it's just a div. There is nothing magical about it. It doesn't do anything special. Like there's no sort of in the spec that says Navman needs to be able to do this. It's not. It's just a div at the end of the day. But for a screen reader who doesn't know where things are on the page, it's important for it to be able to identify, okay, these hyperlinks are now part of a navigation menu. Okay. So what we'll always be doing is we'll always be opening up uh, our navigation with nav, right? Then inside there, we would be using an unordered list. Okay, you get an ordered list, which is the O, 
and that's when it's a bullet uh, when it's like one two three that's your ordered list because it's in an order and then you got your unordered list which is like stars circles whatever because there is no order to it you could switch them around it doesn't matter okay so you would always have an unordered list and then inside you you're going to have your list items and then generally it's going to be a hyperlink never ever 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 a button if it is going somewhere if it is getting linked somewhere it is always 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 a hyperlink a button is what gets used when you're going to be, for example, running JavaScript on the page, um, or you click a button and it calculates the total or something like that. But you can even have, for example, say at the bottom of the page, it was a button and it said, go to next page. And it looks exactly like a button. That must still be a hyperlink. It must still be an anchor link. Um, it must not be a button. So if your page is going somewhere, it is always going to be hyperlink. You can style a hyperlink to look like a button, but the functionality needs to be that if it's navigating somewhere, it needs to be an anchor link. Um, so I'm, I'm going on a tangent there, but it's just it's one of those things that people always uh, tend to miss. Okay, so we're going to have our anchor link here, and we're just going to just just go with the usual home, contact, contact and about. Okay, so there's our home. I'm going to just duplicate it, and we're going to have contact and about. Okay, so that's, this is now how your menu should always look. It should always have your nav with an unordered list and then a list items for each one. Now, um, now I know, I still remember when I was still learning this and I looked at this and I was like, oh no, I'm not going to do this. I don't, I don't feel like having to go and style these things and whatever, like, who cares? Um, and that was just a really arrogant sort of point of view. It's not hard to style this, um, to, to act like the way that you wanted to. Um, and this is learning to have semantic tags will... People are going to get left behind in the dust. The people that aren't adjusting themselves to writing web in an ethical way, um, they are going to get left behind. No one's going to want to work with them because it's dangerous. If I employ you as a web developer and I say to you, I want my page to be accessible by people that have, um, you know, just accessible to everyone. It's, it's, it's the website for the lotto or whatever. If you go and you aren't making this website accessibility, that whole company stands to get sued just because of this. Um, so it's it, at some point there's going to be uh, people are going to draw the line and they're going to say, look, unless you know how to do this, we're not willing to work with you. And in America, that you really do have that people need to know how to do um, proper accessibility, semantic tags, and all of it. South Africa is not as important yet, um, but you know, overseas in that it's it's a much bigger deal. And don't be following what people are the pace that's in South Africa. You need to follow the pace in the US. Um, you know, like the dream job is working for a U.S. company because that's when you're earning your over hundred thousand rand a month. Um, okay, so we got we got our nav. Yeah, so let's just look at the very quick styling that always, always, always happens with uh, styling this web. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go and create a comment here. So uh, what you could do is you could just do uh, Control Slash, um, or otherwise I think Control Shift A should also work there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to write your nav menu. And let's start styling it out. Now, there's a couple of ways you can style it. You can style each thing individually. So I would add a class to nav, add a class to unordered list, add a class to list, even add a class to A. But in this case, I'm going to do sort of like some nested targeting. Um, so I don't think that's actually the correct term. There. So what I'm going to call this here is I'm actually going to call this uh, class is equal to main menu. And inside here, I'm going to start targeting everything. So I'm going to call it main menu. And what I want to do is target the unordered list. So first thing I'm going to get is the unordered list. Now, the first thing over here on the unordered list that we want to get rid of is that list style. That's those horrible looking bullet points that are there. We don't want that in our menu. So we say list style, none. But I feel like that's wrong. Sorry, list style, none. Okay. List style, none. Isn't it list style type? Oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Am I not targeting it correctly? I think, I think it's... Shouldn't you add the list as U-L-L-I? I'm not... Maybe. No, it should just be the sure. unordered. Maybe it's because this isn't saved, so it's not applying this class name. There we go. Okay, so there's a glitch that sometimes happens with live server. Um, that's that one that I was told you about that you can get. Sometimes when you do... If you save all, even though it saves the HTML, it just doesn't pick up the changes for some reason. Um, but so it's just, we can do list style type, and you can also actually just have list style and just have none. Also works. 
Um, so let's let's stick though to list style type because that's that's more accurate. Um, where the other other hand, the other one is the short hand. Okay. So now we've got we've got the bullet points missing, but because it's a list, it's the same as Microsoft Word. Okay. And when I say that, I mean when we've got a word processor, this is my word processor. Sorry, it's just trying to zoom in here, but that's not doing it. Okay. Then immediately when you've got a bullet list, can you see that it creates indentation? It is just the standard way of how we as humans write our lists. So let's get rid of that. Let's do an, an ordered list. Sorry, an ordered list. You can see there's an indentation. It's just always applied when it comes to uh, the way that WordPresses work. And a lot of CSS and HTML, you know, what starting point did they come from? They didn't just some magical island. They're going to start thinking up all these things. They got to come from somewhere. So you'll find a lot of the stuff comes from word processing and from graphic design, uh, things like Photoshop and layers and the way that shadows and box shadows and all those things. Okay, so when we've got this texture and we're using an unordered list, there's always going to be an indentation on the text. Um, and it's easy to forget about that. But just remember that when, you, when you're doing a list, it's just like Microsoft Word, it's going to indent. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be removing the padding. So there is padding that's pushing this, this writing out. Okay, so I've saved it. Um, let's move this across here. And there we go. We have now sort of officially reset it. There is one more thing you can do. These items are... I'm actually going to like ask one of you now a question here, and I want to see if you know why this is. Okay, so this is a box model question. Do any of you know why this is spanning the whole container? It's, it stretches all the way from left to right. Like it's, it's got a display property. Do you know why it's there and it doesn't sort of cut off over here? Like wh why does it go the whole, the whole viewport or sort of the whole width of the screen? Um, and it's actually, it's a very basic answer, but it's, it's, we don't really think about these things. Is it maybe because your lists are always done one underneath each other? It's no, it's, it's basically just because it's display block. That's all it is. It's because it's the play block. And if it's a block, it's going to span the entire counter. Um, in the future, I'm going to be trying to like just just um, keep expanding on the box model because I find that people are still not 100% certain yet. And it's something that I want to make sure that you've got 100%. So if you've got display block, it's going to take the whole screen across. So I know it's really small. So maybe I'll just zoom in. It's going to take the whole sort of width so that the next item goes beneath it. You know, it's just sort of like as a natural pushes it down to the next line. So if we want to then have this, these items, um, sorry. If we actually want to have them next to each other and at the moment they display block, what could we have it that they actually are going to be sitting next to each other? Can I have inline block? Here we go. Okay, it's a great one. So what we can then do there is actually display inline block. So what I'm doing now is I'm selecting the list items and I'm going to go and say display inline block. Um, yes. Just one question on that, um, because I get confused between inline block and inline. So just what's the reason you would use uh, inline block specifically, not just inline? Um, because I, like I use it and I see it works, but I'm not sure on, on the reason behind so it. So inline block is still going to treat it basically as, as a div. Uh, so as a div, as, as sort of just as its container, so it's going to be shifted around. I don't have an answer right at this point in time for the differences between inline and inline block. And I actually, I actually knew the answer for this, but to save myself looking like a complete idiot, which I am, um, I'd rather, I'd rather not just take wild guesses. I'm going to have to probably get back to you after the session just to let you know, uh, or, or just to tell you why, what the difference is between inline and inline block. Um, I think what it will come down to is how content is shifted, if I remember correctly. But it's it's been a while since I looked at that. Um, yeah, because doesn't it have something to do with pushing the contents onto the next page? If it's just maybe if it's just in line, then maybe it'll just keep on adding next to one another. Yeah, I, I like I, I feel like it might not even make a difference. Like it might not make a difference in this case. And only okay, so oh, that's what it is. Yes. Yes, the noodle something silly like this. So compared to display inline, the major difference is is that if it's inline block, you can set a height on it, set height on width, because okay. it is now it is now still a, a Lego block in your page. Where as soon as you go to inline, it's basically text. 
I'm not saying that it's always text, but it's it's in a way if, if you if you're trying to get it so that a way that your brain can digest it. It's that when it's block, it's a thing that gets moved around, whereas um, just inline on its own is usually where, where it's used for like combining text together and that you can't actually style um, height and width on it. Whereas inline block is still is still a block. You can still go and put uh, height and width. Okay, okay. so it, it really is there's just that that difference that there is between it. Okay, so okay. what's this? Thanks. Cool, no worries. And um, what's this done is it's now you can see these items are now aligned next to each other, and that's and that's basically it done. So what you would need to be doing in almost all of your websites that you're going to be building is going to usually be this type of setup. Um, the one last thing that we should be doing here is I haven't got a completely set up. So let me just go and throw uh, like a, a logo in here. I've actually got the FEDSA logo. So uh, I'm just going to go and say image source is equal to assets. I'm sorry, Martin. Yeah. Um, when you're doing the uh, nav links, must you also have justify content like space between so it spreads over the whole nav bar, or can it just be almost lopsided on one side? That 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 depends on your designer and, and how much they're willing to tolerate. Um, look, the space between thing is just a very simple way of spacing out your content. You never have to do it like that. Mm -hmm. um, like for example, we've got the okay. Let me just let me just fix this this uh, logo image and then we can discuss that. Um, okay. I, I'm not too sure what you mean when you said it. It sort of sits off, like off center it's, or something. It's sort of sitting on the one side, so it should be fine if it sits on the one side. Or is there a preference to which side it must sit? Um. What am I doing wrong here? Was it not saved? Oh, sorry, being an idiot. Yeah, there we go. Um, so got that, and then we're just going to take page header, and we're going to display flex. I think once I get this, you're going to be able to probably ask your question a bit better. Okay, so we've now now we've got display flex. Now, what I suggested in the project, which I think is what you're talking about now, is we can justify content. I remember, justify content is the longer word, so it's on the horizontal plan, um, and then we say space between. Uh, and then you save, and immediately you've got your content pushed across like this. Um, mm. Now, long ago, that was so hard to do. Like, man, uh, I like, can't joke with you, but it was so hard to do this, to just have your content split like that. And you had to float right and float left and, and build things in tables. So to be able to just do this with two lines of code is amazing. Um, but so what you are saying do you mean that this menu that I'm sort of hovering over here, did you want that to be somewhere else, like over here? Well, does it matter to which side of the nav bar it actually sits? No. Like, can it sit next to the logo, yeah. or is there a preference in which side? Or there, there is, there is some best practice in that regard. So the first thing is that no, it's your website. You can do as you damn please. If you want to have it wherever you want, you do it wherever you want. Um, but with that being said, you don't want it next to content. That is where you're not going to want to have it. So you don't want to have something like this is info, contact number. Okay, this is not the best example here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sort of act as if these aren't menu links. So I'll just take out this and then let me just say that this was like hello. And then this one would be test so yeah you've got content that is not actually part of a navigation menu you don't want your mm. nav menu sitting amongst contents you want there to be negative space or what do you call it white space um around around your nav links so that is that is sort of the one thing um i do have a couple of links that i will share later that goes over the best practices but i think most of this is sort of almost common sense that you wouldn't go and have your nav link in the middle of your content but so this this is a bad idea where you've got let me zoom in a tiny bit where you've now got your content next to your also your nav links next to content like that you don't want to have so what what you could have here is um hopefully this works don't think it will just imagine that these lines of space you would have space here for this content you know so th then it's that solves that problem 
But as for like your main question, where you know, does this have to be split across like that? No, man. You can have this if, whatever you want. You can have, um, you can have the logo on the right side. You can have the menu links on the left here. You can have um, logo in the middle. You can have your menu links underneath the logo. Uh, I've got a, I've got a website that I'll share afterwards. Actually, let me just open it now so that you know what I'm talking about. I got I actually got some really cool links for you later. Uh, okay, so this one yeah, love it. It is called code my ui right and it has just got design after design after design after design so if you ever get stuck yeah we go um and it's just something i need to mention about designing pages you all are mostly becoming web developers um now part of doing web development actually not part of it what you can also learn as a web developer is ui design in the past it used to be different we used to be web designers um, Skulk would be able to give you all the, the terms that people used to have back then. Like, I think you were a web designer and then you were required to build a site and do the UI design and everything. But it is, it is difficult doing UI design. Like a lot of people take credits away from them. It is a tough job. Like to, to get things to look really good is a skill you need to develop. You don't just, you can't just, oh, I'm going to make a beautiful design and make a beautiful design. It, it takes a lot of work for them to get that good. Uh, so you as a web developer are not typically required to know how to do this stuff. It's not your job anymore. In the past it was. Now, now there's a UI designer slash UX, which is user experience. Um, they, need, they need to come in and do the designs. Then you get given the design and you build it out, just like we did in the project. Um, that's why I didn't have all of you design your own page. It was that you needed to follow a design. Uh, you can, though, get employed as both a web developer and the UI designer, and then hopefully you're going to have a bigger pay because of it. Um, I know someone in America that does this in, for, uh, in the medical in the medical scope, and he makes, makes it so much money uh, because he's doing basically two jobs. But you aren't required to know this. So don't, don't fret if you don't know how to design a beautiful page. It is something you should try and learn to do, but it's not really your job at the end of the day. Um, and there's nothing wrong, though, also, if you want to be a, a web design, web developer and UI designer. I mean, then, then, you know, you're solving a lot of problems. If you can do that, it's just, it's a lot, a lot of stuff to learn. Um, okay. In, any questions just after going on, going off about that? Um, I just have a, a comment. So um, on the, on the UI, de UI design, um, I've been thinking, you know, for mobile users, you know, m a lot of the times the menu is still like here in the top right mm. corner, you know, it's actually, it's actually hot if, well, it depends probably on which, which hand you're holding your phone, but it's actually quite hard to reach, you know, with your thumb because we're mostly working with our thumb to, to the menu. So would it be, would it be better best practice to actually, you know, move the, the menu or something to the middle or, you know, someplace else? Yes. Um, yeah. that's such that's such a great point and i'm going to be honest with you i don't even know what the best practice is for that because if there is one people do not follow it because i can't tell you how many times i sit with my phone and i have to reach over to access the navigation menu um yeah. and it's not just even even like on reddit apps and everything it's just not one hand friendly so i, I what you what you what you're mentioning there is 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 like that's a great question and and it's great i would say that you should definitely build your page according to it so like you said have your nav links in the middle of the page um and much much bigger so they're easier to access uh also make it that it's they're possibly they could be um not buttons but what i'm trying to say is uh make the area that is clickable it can be bigger on mobile devices so what you can do but you could add padding to your anchor link and by adding the padding to your anchor link you're actually making it a bigger clickable area without without knowing about it um so if, if it does come to best practices like if you wanted to go and really really like like you know do a, an amazing job here um something that was suggested to me actually by that american person that i just mentioned earlier were, was to uh let's just take these anchor links and i'll show you what i mean here uh you can go and I think it's the padding that you would change. So I'm going to just change the padding to like 50 pixels. Okay. So now, can you see that I'm actually just in the middle of, of nowhere's man, nowhere land here, but these are now clickable links all around this button here. So that's, that's all clickable. 
So um, let me just uh, inspect it. So on mobile device, as sort of like to make sure that your things are clickable and all of that, these are the type of touches that would make you an amazing web developer. That you know you're thinking about all the different ways um, that things should be working. Sorry, my browser just glitches sometimes and I can't get dev tools. Okay, so by adding that padding, you'll see now that these buttons, now that's, you see that that's that button. Well, yeah, yes, contact. So this whole area is clickable. I mean, it's overkill in this example, um, but there, there's such a case of where you can, for mobile devices, make the experience a lot better. Because that's, most of the time, I would say as time goes on, your mobile device users are going to grow and grow and your desktop users are going to be less and less. Um, the e-commerce sites that I've been working on in the past, it's always mobile devices. It's, if, you, if you're targeting America and Europe, it's mobile devices. Um, and then even when you come to South Africa, people in, that, that, that live in poverty, even then you've actually got mobile devices because they don't have, they can't afford a desktop computer at home. So pretty much like mobile should always be the biggest sort of market that you're targeting for, or like the best experience you can give will usually be for, for mobile devices. So it's, it's really good that you picked that up. Um, I don't know, I don't know what the best practice is for that, but, but like you said, uh, you don't want it to be like a desktop experience. You're going to want to like have the links maybe going down like this possibly, um, or you push, you push your hamburger menu and a whole thing's going to open up and there's going to be giant menu links for you to click. Uh, the, and you know, all of that being said, there is, there are some things that's in the one link that I'm going to give you, uh, sort of, sort of some best practices that you should follow, uh, but it's, it's still opinionated. So it's just what this one person thinks this isn't necessarily, it's like a rule, but it's just stuff like, you know, some people say that when you've got a, a mobile device, should you hide your menu links behind a, a hamburger menu or should they always be present? Yeah. You know? I, I'm not going to be able to give you the answer to that, unfortunately, as much as I wish I could. I don't know. I don't know what the right way to do it is. Um, because is there a right way? You've got people that shout, no, they should just always be visible. You shouldn't have to click a button to click a menu link. That's just bad user experience. And and I, I have to agree with them. But at the same time, a designer is going to come with an amazing site that has got a, a better user experience. And I've got to agree with that person too. So... You know, it's 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 you're going to hear this a lot in 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 programming, opinionated, and um, it took me the longest time to understand what that means. And it's basically just people have what they believe is the best way to do it, but it's not the right way to do it. It's, it's not necessarily the way to do it. It's just that person's way to do it. Um, Franz could come up with like a really cool technique, and everybody starts doing it, and it becomes his opinionated way of doing it, and we all do it. But it's not necessarily the right way to be doing it. Um, and so that's that's one of the things is your mobile menu. Should you be hiding your menu links behind um, a hamburger menu? And that, and that's going to have to be a design decision you're going to have to make, or the UI slash UX designer, or you working together with them, um, seeing what is going to work better for you. Yeah. So I think, so what I saw was, I mean, a lot of the older websites, I think people that have designed their website, you know, a lot of these uh, resorts and stuff, they, they have these big menus, but on mobile, it's really hard to, yeah. you know, click on one item. So I think for that, maybe a hamburger menu, I don't know how to do that. How, how would you have so many items, you know, in a menu base, it's almost too much, but um, for me as a user on a mobile, it's, it's really hard to, even with the hamburger to, you know, click on, on the link on the side and then see all these different options and then click on another option and it doesn't work and you're almost discouraged. Mm. So it's a, it's a, yeah, I understand. It's a, it's a opinionated, yeah. <laughs> a hard topic. It, it is. It's a tough one. Like what, what, for example, you mentioned is that, uh, let's just go with, with, with that example. And it's actually in some of that, that documentation I will give you later. Um, generally that's just if they've got too much information and so they need to go with a different approach, a different set of tools, and they should possibly be looking at having like a search bar so that you can search the different options. Like you can't just list all of those, those, those menu links, like it's, it's, it's sub menu links. So you've got a menu that goes into another menu and then there's like a sub link after that menu. And, and it's just impossible to display all that information on a mobile device. Um, just make sure that I've got this link here. I wanted to just drag it over. 
So you'll see that in the one link that I give you, they go over this exact thing. I'm just trying to see if I can spot it here before I bring it over. No. Okay. Um, so like, uh, there's this one link that I'll be dropping. I think it's about four links I'm going to be giving you. So even, even yeah, they discuss it. Um, use the search bar. When you've just got too much information, you need to go and use the search bar. Uh, and and I, I agree with them. Like, like you use the resort websites. And one, one for me that often does this type of thing are theming websites. Like, so when I used to be a Joomla developer, there was Rocket Themes. Let's see if I can grab them quickly. Um, and then they just had this incredibly hard menu to navigate. I don't know if they've changed it since. Um, so yeah, okay, so it's not as complicated anymore. But so you, you've got your sort of drop down links and then you've got these links like this. Now trying to access these kind of links on a mobile device is hell. I hate it. I hate it every single time I need to do it because as you like click on it and then it goes away as soon as you take your finger off the link. Um, so these used to these sort of drop down menus they were very very popular in the past but with mobile devices coming in um and this isn't this isn't set in stone this is sort of like my opinion on this is that th these sort of menus are these drop down menus are slowly dying out it's just you can't display this information very well on a mobile device so what you're probably gonna have to do is over here it's just a list of them and then when you drop down or when you hover you get you get them popping out then when it comes to mobile device what you should then do is pop them out permanently so it says wordpress themes plugins docs oh, there's nothing here. then joomla templates extensions all on the screen at once so let's see if they actually do that um so they've got okay so yeah yeah that's exactly what i'm talking about so you can see that instead of having the drop downs again they've actually there's a word for it. They've expanded out all of their menu items. Okay, so if you are ever dealing with drop down, when it gets to mobile, don't continue your drop down on mobile devices because they can't they can't hover. Mobile devices can't hover. Like if you if you are building a mobile only website, you don't even have to waste time with hover effects like this on a button because there is no hover effect on the button. I mean, yes, there is in the sense that. If you glitch your phone, if you click here and you hold it so that it shows that context menu, so it shows a context menu like this, then you will see it does actually activate a hover. But just in general, mobile devices don't have a hover because you can't hover with your finger. You can only press and then you can lift. Um, okay, so just while we're on this topic, there was another, another topic I wanted to discuss here. No. Okay. So when it comes to your menus, uh, sort of one try and rule of thumb that you should try and follow is just try not make it too complicated. If, if there is, if you've got too many menu items, what you can look at is splitting them up. Uh, so let's say that I decided I don't like all of these things here that are dropping down. What you could have is you could continue having your main nav menu here. Then on your side, you could have a side menu, which has got now even more information. And then lastly, over here, this is probably why they, they removed these items, is that you can finally search for content. Um, let's see if it's a, like if it actually gives feedback. No. Um, so before this, there used to be like lots of fields here. Uh, and and yeah, so now, now you can actually search for it. So at least you take out some of the stuff. Let's see if there's another menu that they got here. No. So, okay, so yeah, it's like a side menu almost. Yeah, that's like technically a side menu. Um, and then one we haven't discussed yet is the footer. Um, your footer has usually got a site map, a site map in it. And what that basically shows is what is all of your website about? Um, so in your bigger websites, you are going to see a footer like this, a giant footer. And inside it is generally going to be, uh, they're going to be expanding more about what they are like as a business and what other content you can find on the website. Um, so those, yeah, those are the types of menus you've got. You've got, you know, your, your normal top menu. Um, you've got your side menu, which is sort of like this. Not the best example here. Um, and then, then you generally got your footer menu. So, uh, Talitha, you, you mentioned earlier that when you've got that hamburger menu, 
and then on mobile you would click it were you saying you don't know how to do that as in you don't know how to achieve that effect um as as uh, like programming it or yeah just building it and designing it so I've, i have designed one like with a with a youtube help okay. on udemy I've, I've designed a hamburger menu just with css because i'm still learning javascript um but it was more about like just the different styles and things because I, because i see that hamburger menus are quite uh, well it's a favorite mm -hmm. among a lot on a lot of lots of menu um, websites so i just i was just wondering if it's if there's other types of menus that people also like to use or best practices or, yeah yeah no i get you um you know, so it's it's not like it's it's a hugely diverse sort of I don't know what you call it component with all these different ways of handling it. It's more like it's it's only sort of a couple of ways that it gets dealt with, and then people are very very creative with the way that they handle it. Um, so what I found to be quite popular these days, um, and I really like it. I've even actually got it on my own website. Is that generally you got your sort of mobile menu link or icon, hamburger icon, you click it. And okay, so what you would usually have is what I did in our project is that you would click it. Um, this stuff wouldn't be visible. And what happens is that a wrapper comes down. So let's, uh, can you see this box or is, does it not show? Okay. Yeah. Great. So, it wasn't, yeah. Yeah, I can see so it. what generally happens is that you've actually got a box and it grows, it flows out like that. Um, what's actually happening is that it's always this size but it's hidden behind this container. So it's actually just translating down and then it translates back up and then um, the overflow causes it to be hidden, right? So that's that's the basic style that um, we were in the project that I said how it was going to basically work. But now what you get is, and I see it's really popular that I was talking about just now, is that you click it, a whole container comes over the screen and then there is just really, really big menu links on there. And I, I have to admit, like, I really dig it. Like, I just I just seem to like it. Um, and and then when you're done, there's a big X. You click the X and it goes away. So let's just, um, let me just bring up this page. I know that there were some examples here. So tons of examples here for this exact type of thing. So if we have a look at this top left one here, you click it. Um, and then the whole screen is covered with your menu. I really like it. Like, I just to me, it just seems, and it, it could be, a year from now people are going to say that this is a horrible way to be doing menus um you, know, you just never know so it's all going to be the same concept at the end of the day uh, i'll actually show you now the different types of menus that you get okay so yeah you got your basic menu which is going to be one that sort of overflows onto your page then you've got this one over here um this was super popular about 10 years ago um where you hover over a menu link and there is going to be a drop down but getting this into your mobile design is a pain. Usually shows that you just got too much information as opposed to something like this where there's just the four links. Um, so you got the one where it flows, you just got your links, then you got these ones with the drop down. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's 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 like just the two big ones that sort of go about. But then then there's just limitless different ways of how you can handle it. Um, so go to go to this link when when you are done this evening or add it to your reading list or whatever you use to keep track of these things and and just have a look at all these different ways of doing things for inspiration um you know it's like clever things like this where they're zooming in and out it's it's completely useless though it's it's, it's if anything it's actually be a really bad experience but you never know if that's going to sort of give you um your next great idea uh, so let me just go to page one i think on page one there were some good examples yeah I like this one. So this one, yeah, is the sort of type of thing I was talking about. You click it, the whole thing sort of just flows onto the page, but there's a little bit of artistic styling to it. So it looks really cool. It just looks so cool. And, and then this one as well, very simple. You've got a line that comes across, and then you've got the word that comes up. Now, if you... Let's just talk about this one very quickly. So I'm trying to grab it at the right time. So super basic. I just want to try and give you sort of... um. That you sort of think of things the same way that I'm thinking of it, using Photoshop and, and doing web stuff for so long. Sorry, that was the wrong thing. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, so now it should work. Okay. So, super basic. You look at it and it looks amazing and it seems really complicated and everything. But basically, all you do is you draw a div. 
I mean, sorry, like I would use a div, but you can also have um, bottom border and it grows across, right? And then it just moves across. Then this text here, this is going to be inside a container like this. But then the text itself is going to be underneath this container. So let me just snatch it out like that. Okay. So if anything is outside this container, it's invisible. So if it's over here, you can't see home. But as soon as it starts coming into this, it starts becoming visible. So to demonstrate what I mean here, yeah, let me just um, change this to whatever color. Okay. So you can't see anything under the green. So home starts here and it flows into this container. And the way that that works is that this pink container at the back here has just got overflow set to hidden. So if you were to translate home off screen, you can't see it. Then you just animate it. So you, you start off with it animated off and you animate it back to zero. Your translate Y, right? So it starts off with translate Y plus 200. It's just way too high. Sorry. Plus 140. And you translate it back to zero. And home comes back in like that. Now, if you do this once with the line and the writing, because of CSS, you just add delay to your animation. And you only have to create this once. And it will work with each of your different things. Um, so... Ideally, by the time we'd like, I'm, I'm finished with mentoring and all of that, you'll be able to sort of see these things and think like that. Like a lot of these things are actually just really, really basic and people just being very clever from, you know, using those tools for so long, knowing what, what the limitations are and what they can do with it. Um, but never look at something and be like, man, that is just so overly complicated, <laughs> except when people do 3D and CSS. Then, then that is, that's something else. Like... Uh, yeah, that's something else. Like people make first-person shooters just using pure CSS, and it's it's crazy that people can do that. Um, but general stuff like this, it's actually that simple if you can just try and break it down. Um, okay, so we're going to be running out of time shortly. So, is there anything um that 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 any of you would like to discuss? Like, I'm sorry that it's not like a I haven't got like all of these cool examples that I've brought out for you. Um, you know, as I mentioned, like I have been super busy this month, unfortunately, but it's going to be it's. So it's, it's slowing down. I'm going to have all of my time for, for all of you. Uh, but also because I've never really done an have menu class. So I'm not sure exactly what it is uh, to cover. Like if I should have bought different examples or anything. Um, so if, if Talitha, if anyone you have any questions, please let me know. Yeah, so um, this was perfect. So I just I just wanted to know, like, you know, what just basically just like a discussion just to understand because... I'm mostly working on my own, you know, behind mm. the desk, desktop. So um, just to hear your opinion as well, help me. And yeah, I'll definitely look at these um, these links and play around with it just to get more comfortable with it. Because um, yeah, um, I'm also looking into UX design. And so, so it's just also important. I, I feel like it's important to design for for the end user and, and it's mostly mobile, mobile mm. users. So just to understand what's the best practices for that. Yeah especially with menu, um, menu navigation. Yeah. yeah, that you answered all my questions, basically. Uh, you have, you have sort of put me down this path though. So I will be doing research this week just to see if there are some best practices that I can maybe slap a video together and say, look, yeah, it's a top 10 list of things that you should always be doing. Um, but I think as long as you're following the semantics, then the sort of the world is your oyster. You can do it however you want to do it. Um, and if you are being creative and you are doing UI slash UX, uh, don't be shy about thinking out of the box, trying something different. You know, you don't always have to do what everybody's doing. Um, you know, everybody can be wrong. You know, that's a problem. People think that if lots of people are doing something, that it has to be right. No, no it doesn't work like that. Um, there's lots of things in the world where everybody's doing it one way and, and they're all doing it wrong. Um, so feel free to like explore and, and see if there's things that work for you, any, any kind of creative things. Like for example, this, this pink box here, which I'm, I'm in love with this. This person would have probably 10 years from now been told, no, that's just too extravagant or whatever. But to me, that's amazing. You know, like I'm going to remember this stuff for, for many, many years to come about like how this particular design, I'm probably going to even get something similar. Um, so yeah, think out the box when it comes to UI slash UX. And, and if you're the person doing slash the user interface, you can do whatever you want. It's your design at the end of the day. Um, yeah. Cool. Just going to check my notes and see if there's anything um, that should have been discussed. There's also breadcrumbs. Sorry, I made a note chat. I didn't discuss breadcrumbs. Uh, breadcrumbs, which is also another nav menu, basically. Uh, 
it shows you where you are on a page. Uh, generally, you'd see them on the forums. Uh, I'm, I'm not seeing anything here. Let me just, just Google. And breadcrumbs is the one case, I believe, where you actually will be using an audit list. That's just not the right kind of breadcrumbs. So, yeah, you'll see it here. So, it's basically just like it's a hierarchy of where you are on the page. That's a better example. So, we were in projects and we navigated to breadcrumb inside projects and because of this it's actually an ordered list so when you build out your breadcrumbs use an ordered list so that's ol the ol tag and you build this out because it's actually in a particular order you can't move download with breadcrumb it, it's not going to work whereas on your normal website home and about can be moved there's no difference in whether they move that the meaning is still exactly the same whereas in a breadcrumb these have to be in a particular order Uh, so I'm just trying to think now. It's, there was one last thing that I wanted to just cover just for best practices. No, so I think that's it. Okay, everybody. Time's going to be running up in a moment. Is is there anything you'd like to have covered next week? Um, can I ask something concerning the project we were given? Yes. Um, I've run into a few bugs concerning that it's now... When, when I hit a certain pixel range, my card or my card that I've got there gets thrown out of whack. It doesn't keep the content inside the card. Is there a specific CSS rule or something that I can do to rectify that? No, I'm going to have to, like, at the moment I'm flying blind, so I'd have to see your code. But generally, your Flex container, if you're using Flex or Grid, either one of them, they should keep your card from ever growing out of any container that it's in um uh, failing which what you can also do is you can also specify a max width so that your cards are allowed to grow but not past a certain point but um look look at uh, douglas when we're done yeah um if you can just via pm just drop me the link for your repo um and i'm not going to be able to sort it out this evening i need to go and handle some things when i'm done yeah uh but i will have it to you by the end of tomorrow I'll, I'll go over it and then just see what, what can be happening with the code and, and, and how to fix it uh, but so that you can... I'm going to have to try and actually do it this evening so that you can actually continue this evening. Um, yeah, because I would definitely like to finish this yes. off before Monday, before the next one. Next okay, week. then just drop your link after this and I'll have a look at it in, in the next hour. And then um, also just in regards to the project, just because I ran out of time, the, the plan is that I'm going to have like a, a one to three video session, or one video, but it's just going to probably be very long, of me building out the whole project from scratch and then break it into little parts so that uh, t like time, time stamps, time code, or whatever it's called. And then you can at least sort of follow along and see what you could have actually done different. Like that was the plan all along. It's just that, that I had sort of something pop up this August and it was difficult for me to, to get it all done in time. Um, so in, in the next week, you should see the entire project being built out in a whole YouTube video. Okay. Okay. Great, everyone. I'm going to end it off here. Uh, thanks a lot for, for attending. I hope, I hope the session has proved valuable to you. Uh, I will be dropping all of these menu, uh, sorry, all of these nav menu links, uh, in the thread that I created earlier. Um, and please be sure to check that out. That one that I mentioned uh, this one, yeah, especially that's got all these different design elements. Like this is great to have that you can always look at for inspiration. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, okay. everyone. Thanks, Have a good day. Thanks, Thank Michael. you so much. Cheers. Bye.